Hello, artist! I'm Kelly Folsom and I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. We're going to be talking about what to do when you're not seeing results fast enough. Those of you who maybe don't know very much about me, I am a very impatient person. <laughs> I like to see results very, very quickly. And um, I've been like this for a really long time. Like I remember when I first started playing uh, volleyball and basketball whenever I was in junior high and um, I would get really frustrated, you know, I'd get really frustrated. Ugh, everybody else is, you know, making their shots and getting better and I can't even get the ball over the net, you know, in volleyball I can't serve the ball even underhanded over the net. So I would get really upset over not seeing the results that I wanted and fast enough. And of course, when I went and whined and complained about this to my mom, hoping to get some sympathy <laughs> or at least her approval to quit, um, she she said, well, can't never did do nothing. So just get out there and keep practicing. But I learned some really valuable lessons from those experiences. And that was to have some patience, like, just to keep putting in the work, keep practicing. Um, but not only that, because whenever we are not seeing the results that we want to see fast enough, part of the problem could be that you're just not practicing enough or you're not doing deliberate enough practice when you are practicing, like focusing on one thing and trying to get better at that one thing. Um, that's, you know, what I mean by deliberate practice, or for example, like whenever you go to do a painting, if you know that a weak spot of yours is, um, your paint quality or making deliberate brush strokes, then a deliberate intentional practice would be whenever you go to do a painting that you really try to think through every brush stroke and make a more deliberate brush stroke and not just go back to your old habits of like smoothing everything out or blending everything out, for example. And also doing paintings with the intentions of um, analyzing your composition or comparing compositions and seeing which ones are better and why they're better so that you can try to understand how to set up compositions better. Um, I remember for me, my last year in art school, I had a lot of this deadline pressure of this final show and um, I really wanted to have good work because it was a chance for me to sell work. Also, I identified that one of my weakest parts in my paintings were my compositions. I was like, I need to get better at my still life setup. So I started A, started studying really good still life setups and comparing my paintings with their paintings to see like, well, why is their composition better than mine? Um, so that's intentional focus study, right? Like you have an outcome or an objective that you're trying to achieve, that you're trying to get, you're a result that you're trying to get better compositions, right? So if you don't identify what the result is, it's very difficult to even be able to do that intentional practice or intentional study. And of course, that ended up being several years worth of study, but it paid off and in a big way because um, I understand composition now in all genres on a whole other level because I've spent so much time dealing with it, studying it, you know, trying to understand it. Does it mean that every composition I do is like, you know, home run? No, it doesn't, you know, but, but I understand if it's not a home run, I can understand why it wasn't. So the other thing about when you're not seeing results fast enough is so often we want the answers or the result without having to figure it out. We want the answer first. Just give me the answer. I don't want to figure all this crap out. Just give me the freaking answer, right? Well, guess what? Like everybody wants that, but it's only the people that will actually put themselves through the figuring it out that get that answer. Whether they're getting help from other people or not, you still have to do the work yourself to figure it out. Like somebody can give you the answer and it is pointless because you're not putting it into practical application. So I encourage you, like if you're impa impatient right now, you feel like you're not seeing results 
fast enough, I would really question like, why does that bother me so much? Why is that? Why is that a problem? What am I hoping to gain by, you know, getting that result, whatever that result is? If you don't deal with that internal dissatisfaction, you're still going to have it when you reach mastery um, or a higher level of skill. It's still going to be there because guess what? You always raise the bar and you always want to get better. And um, so, so the other thing that I would recommend, like when you're not seeing results fast enough, is get some help. Like get some um, get some outside help. I know for me, anytime I felt like I was getting into a plateau or just stagnated, then I would be like, all right, I need some more input. Like I need, I need some advice. I need some good instruction. I need somebody to show me my blind spots. What am I missing here? So sometimes you need somebody to point it out to you. And of course it's helpful if they can point it out to you in a way that you've never, like in a way that you've never heard before or just in a different way so that it clicks better. So you may want to start looking like, is there somebody else I could learn from or study from, or maybe they will say it in a different way that I will really get it because I'm just kind of tuning this person out now. Sometimes that happens as well. And you just need like a fresh perspective or a fresh point of view. Um, so that's what I used to do would be like, okay, I'm going to sign up for a workshop or go take this class, um, whether it's online or in person so that I can get some fresh perspective, some fresh, um, feedback from somebody. Um, so that's another thing that you can do whenever you're not seeing results fast enough that will really help move the needle forward, you know, farther for you. Um, the other thing this would be, you know, tip number four, (laughs) when you're not seeing results fast enough, and that is tracking your results, tracking your progress. It's really hard for us to hold in our memory, like how far we've come. So sometimes we just have a dissatisfaction with where we are because we have forgotten where we were. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Hello. You know, if this happens like in all areas of our life, it's hard for us to remember uh, a month ago, gosh, I can't even remember what I was doing a month ago, three months ago, a year ago, three years ago, five years ago. It's hard to hold all of that in this little memory bank we have up here. This became abundantly clear to me at the end of my freshman year in art school because we were about to have to put up our work for a review. It was called Freshman Review. The teach we were supposed to hang it up in front of everybody. Scary. And um, all the instructors were going to give us this formal formal grade in this formal letter. Um, It was supposed to include feedback, you know, what we were doing well, what we um, needed to improve the most, you know. And so this is supposed to be a good thing, right? But because I was in the first year of art school and my self-confidence was like this tall, it was like as tall as an ant. It was so tiny, tiny, tiny little ant of self-confidence. So I totally was not seeing how beneficial this was and I was really afraid and frightened to have my work criticized, to have it rejected. I was terrified that everybody was just going to, you know, be walking by my work laughing. Ha ha ha. Look at her crappy painting, you know. So I was kind of like playing up all this drama in my head and um and I, I was complaining to my boyfriend, uh, Monty. So he said, hey, tonight, whenever you come over for dinner, can you bring all of the paintings that you have from this year? I was like, oh my gosh. He was like, and we'll go through them together. So sweet, right? He also told me to get over myself as well. So maybe <laughs> a little tough love in there too. But he said, you know, bring all your paintings over together. We'll go through them together. Let's just... Let's really look at them. Let's go through and let's pick together, you know, what you're going to put up for freshman review. So, and he specifically said, bring all, everything, you know, every painting that you've done in this school year. So we lined them up from the very first painting I did 
to the last newest painting I did and they were all lined up around this wraparound navy blue chenille couch. <laughs> I remember it so clearly and just like after he did that, after he lined them all up, I could see instantly, I mean, what a genius he was for doing this because I could see immediately, instantly, oh my God, I have come so far. Still makes me cry because it was such an emotional, it was such a transformative experience in that moment. Um, I just, I saw like beginning to end the progress that I had made and not comparing myself to anybody else, but really just looking at like my progress. This is what I've done this year. And I really, really have made progress. So whether or not I'm as good as so-and-so over here, doesn't matter. I am getting better at this and I am making progress. So the point of that story is to illustrate to you the power of tracking your results. So my friends, please, please do that for yourselves, especially if you're somebody like I was who's very hard on yourself, very self-critical, um, and um, you feel like you're not growing fast enough. However you can do that, whether it's taking photographic um, evidence of your paintings or like me if you have all of your paintings there. Um, so that's why I think it's important that you don't throw too much of your, your work away right away, that you do try to keep it and keep record of it, take photos of it, and it gives you the motivation to go, okay, we, we got this, we got this, we're doing good. Like one foot in front of the other, let's, let's pick ourselves up tomorrow. And also it's giving yourself credit and celebrating and rewarding yourself for the work that you've done. So hopefully these tips and tools, really tools, will help you whenever you get in those times and places where you feel like you're not progressing um, fast enough. There's always a way to kind of speed up your progress. Oftentimes people will say like, wow, you know, you've come so far in such a short time. And um, so I do believe there are, you know, hacks or whatever you want to call it, ways to shortcut our processes in learning. You can only speed it up so much, though. So it's really critical for us to be loving and caring towards ourselves and also give ourselves the credit for the credit we deserve for the progress that we have made and how far we have come. But it's made up of daily commitment, daily work, daily doingness of um, the hard things and the things that suck sometimes to do, right? Okay, my friends, I hope this has helped you and I'm wishing you all much, much love. Please be um, gentle with yourselves, um, but also get what the heck you want too, my friend, just in a loving, more gentle way to yourself.